a lot of parents don't allow maturity to take place in the life of the children. So they just throw them there. And you know the unfortunate thing? Some of our parents will throw them into the boarding house. And there are a lot of disasters happening over there. And then they go to the university at the age of 14 too. And then the big guys will catch them. You know? And then you see them in court. One court or the other. I want to say that 90% by statistics, 90% of the children that go to the university at such tender age, they join cults and they join the wrong set of people. It's even in Nigeria, somehow we kind of encourage it. Where we say, oh, uh, if you want to go to, if you want to work, some businesses we say we want very young, we want young people. Or if you're 20 years now, if you say you want a child of 20, you are telling us that we should graduate them on time. And when they say 20 years, they still say experience. Where would that child get that experience? A child that leaves university. I mean, I don't know. I mean, we are we are contradicting each other. It's another very beautiful, lovely moment today in Lagos, Nigeria, West Africa, as we celebrate an institution. We started with the founders of the institution, the great couple, Dr. and Engineer Mrs. E.O. Dosumo. Right now, we are moving to the office of the principal and administrator of Elias International School. Lagos, Nigeria. It has been an interesting story in the last 30 years. This educational facility has raised great leaders across board in the business, education, and diplomatic community around the world. It's not been a small journey. And the year, 30 year, three decades, it's themed thriving at 30. We are here with the principal and administrator Mrs. Olua Kemi Olua Guno. It is nice being with you today and uh, we find it a very interesting moment to be with you and to speak about the school at Tati. First and foremost, how will you describe Elias International, International School at Tethi? What are the challenges and what are the success stories like? Thank you very much. It's a pleasure. Hilas International School um, is a great school, a school known for academic excellence and morals. 30 years down the lane, uh, we've been building, I would say constructing, helping, assisting every child out there who is opportune to be with us in our school. We've been known for is zero tolerance for malpractice and we've been producing beautiful results as we move on in our service to humanity. Uh, your school is known to be excellent at uh, morals. People look at, they talk about the school and they say, okay, in terms of excellence, when you're talking about 20 best schools in Lagos, Elias name will naturally pop up and we are talking about the five best school in this environment of uh, Abuli Ekba, Ili Epo, Akbadi Okudu, that your school always pop up. What is the unique selling points of Elias? How have you been able to achieve this? Because we also learned that your school gave the nation the first female pilot if I'm not mistaken. So what are the qualities, what are the unique selling points, the USP of Elias International Schools in the last 
30 years what are the unique selling points how have you been able to build such a wonderful educational facility Hilarious International School is a Christian school mm. and um, we've been using Christian principles to build the children our core values which we which we term as dies we call it D dies that is double D I C E and the first D is actually discipline the second diligence and then the high we have for integrity and the C creativity and he for excellence we've been working on that for the past 30 years and the Lord has been helping us. We don't play, play at all with these core values because we believe that the principles that um, you build children with is what will take them out there and make them to stand out in the uh, community where they found themselves. Apart from that, Elias as a word, the acronym is E for excellence again. For you to know the, the importance we have placed on that E for excellence. And then we have the word L for love. You know, in a Christian community, you cannot do without love. And again, when you're dealing with children, you know, uh, you, you can't you can help them. You can't do anything without loving them. So love is part of what we do here. We make love to be the major. We train them with love. We speak with them with love. We talk to them with love. We correct them in love. So that is part of what we value and what we stand for. Another is the word I. This time around, the I in Elias, which stands for our acronym, is actually industry. And you know, when you train children with that hard work, because industry is synonymous to hard work, labor, that's part of what we value. And that part of what is making our children to sit for their examination, even without looking left and right, because it's salutary land for malpractice. And our A is advancement. We look forward to a community where there's advancement. The children keep on advancing. And we thank God we have children who came into our school at the age of two. Some of them have their own children now. And they are bringing their children to the school again. So, I mean, advancement is part of what we are known for. Yes. And then uh, when you look at the last word, which is S, success. That's, w that's who we are. We, we, we advertise success. We make our children believe in success because we believe that every child has the ability to succeed in life. Uh, the God we are serving is a God of success. And then um, we, that we are the children, we, we have the heritage, we have the gene. Everything in us is all about success. So what we do in the lives, we kind of bring it out of the children and make them believe that they can succeed. And just like you said before, he last actually produced the first female pilots over the years. And we have a lot of them on that line too. We have doctors, we have... So it's part of our core value and what we stand for, the acronym of the school. These are things that have been building the children, making them to believe in themselves and to do well out there. And not to forget God. Because our vision is raising laureates who will be able to do things out there in all spheres of human endeavors and then serve God and humanity. So that's what we are known for. And I believe with all this, um, we are going higher and we never stop. Looking at uh, the generation to generation tradition of excellence, you look at the fact that Elias have developed leaders who passed through this institution in the last three decades. And right now, some of them are even bringing their children. How does it make you feel that you have people who started in this school, like the proprietor said when we went to his office, he said the first four grew up and they are now businessmen and successful entrepreneurs in their own endeavors. And most of them are even family people who have their own family, their own children. So when you see people who went through this institution from the nursery, primary, to up to the secondary, and today they are not bringing their own children, how do you feel? Do you feel anything different? How does it make you feel? It's exciting. It's really exciting, I must tell you. Because uh, the fact is when you see people who have passed through your school and then they do well out there, 
they get married because sometimes they even invite us we go there we share them up and then they have their own children and they feel that belonging and they still feel like bringing their children to the school it's exciting you it gives you confidence that you're doing it right because for a, a child that you have trained to still bring the child back to the school, now we have the next generation, next generation, third, fourth, fifth generation coming to the school. It's actually exciting and it's something we are proud of. We love them. In fact, we, we love those students who have brought their children back to us. And we're doing our best to instill into them the culture that Elias have been known for over the years. Starting Elias 30 years ago, what were the holders? I mean, at the time you took over the baton of leadership, what were the hurdles and how were you able to sustain the challenges and were you able to, you know, to, 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 to surmount courage to continue and to get to this level of excellence? What were the hurdles like and what were the necessary strategies that you used to surmount those hurdles and be able to maintain a culture of excellence? Thank you. I came in here, let me say, 15 years ago. And um, I came in from uh, another, let's say another career entirely, although so close, because I was a lecturer before coming here to be the administrator. So, but what I'm saying, another career, is not that an entire uh, different career, but we deal with the uh, adults as a lecturing uh, job. But here, you're going to do, deal with children from the nursery, I would say from the credo down to the, the senior school. So it was a, a, ball, a different ball game altogether. But uh, I just bless God because I, uh, somehow, because I've been trained to be an educationist somehow. So it was easy for me, really, to be able to walk in and do it right. But then I had to go to some uh, programs, seminars, workshop to enhance my knowledge in this um, in this job then I had to meet some uh, let me say some proprietors out there uh, I don't mind mentioning them Mrs. Sadra Kiyemiju of the dance hall uh, mission school had always been there for me and she is one of the people that pioneered Christian education so when I came in here into education with children, I went to meet her and she was so, I mean, she was so good. She explained so many thing, things to me and then somehow all these had helped me to be able to uh, overcome the challenges that I, I was facing then, you know. I, I want to say the challenges in education are always there anyway. Yeah, because you meet children, you meet different kind of people, mothers, parents, children from different homes. So every year, 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 you see different things coming up. But with experience, you're able to deal with the issues as they come. And one issue I would say we have here, around here, is the fact that um, uh, Elias International School started like, let me say, like a mission school. So people believe that, oh, we don't have to pay school fees and things like that. The fees were so low. And so you want to do something big. You want to do some fantastic things. And then uh, you're not getting the right fees to do it. But along the line, God has been so faithful. And then we've been able to put in the standard that we really want. I think I, think I will give the glory back to God. For the challenges that we've been able to overcome, the hurdles that we've been able to jump over, and that we are still strong. It's God. What are the basic challenges of running a quality educational facility in a third world environment where you have the problem of power, they have the problem of uh, inflation, uh, the, the price of dollar is not very constant, and there's always uh, what can I call it? It's a kind of uh, challenge in the economic uh, dynamics of the country, and things are always things go up, come down, and all that. What are the basic challenges of running a quality educational facility in a third world environment like Nigeria and a cosmopolitan state like Lagos? Challenges uh, in the third world. I think the challenges facing the educational system. Um, kind of the same all over but when you talk about the third world it's a little bit uh, the challenge is more let me say more pronounced now we know that technology is the in thing and the third world we are very slow in catching up 
with the rates uh, of improvement in technology. Now, most schools in different countries are already using um, the IT system, uh, the computer, online education, and things like that. But here, for many schools, we're just starting. Let me use that word. We're just there because if you look at the rate at which um, IT stuff is going in Nigeria, it's just, it's very slow. Children over the two years, three years, they're using all these gadgets easily. But in Nigeria, it's not like that. It's not, it's not like that. So it's just coming in. And, no, so the, uh, and, and knowing what um, these children will face in the children, because we are, we are, we are developing uh, the next generation. Yes. We are developing the next generation. And they need to be well equipped with what they will face during their own time. So equipment is part of our challenges. You mentioned human resource, part of the challenges, because in Nigeria, some of, uh, I won't say not everyone anyway, but our teachers, I thank God for the teachers we have in Elias, well-groomed and very dedicated, developing themselves every time. But over there for many schools, I want to say that the universities throw out some teachers that are not capable and then, I mean, they come in and you're like, oh, what is this? But except teachers that are determined to work hard, go for conferences and develop themselves. And that's the caliber we have in Elias. I think that's one of the best things we can say God has given us, good teachers. Now, I want to say, uh, you, apart from the challenges of all this, is the challenges we face with economy, tough especially in this part of Lagos too, you know. It's tough because most of our parents, they want good education, they want the, they want the best education. But uh, you can't give something that is so beautiful if you are not getting something that we will use in doing it. So, but they want something nice, our children should do this and that, but the finance. So most of us, most of the school owners over the administrators, what they try to do is, try so hard, just give back to the country, give back to the to humanity through thick and thin. Some of them just struggle to survive actually. But we thank God over the link. God has been faithful to us. We've tried to do our best, give good quality education despite the economy and they fight it out. And we are still doing it and we're doing it right and we are moving. Standing in a class, what do you think is the average uh, the challenge of an average uh, child in this part of the world, being the administrator, I'm sure you will have gotten information from your subordinate, the teachers, and in most cases you will have stood in front of some of those students. When you look at their psyche, and you look at their sense of uh, reasoning, what do you think are the major challenges of an average Nigerian child in this environment, in this hostile environment? Hmm. Uh, the normal Nigerian child is facing a lot. I will start from the influence of social media. And I will say that this social media is not only really affecting the Nigerian child, I think it's something that is common globally. But for us here, because our culture negates some of the things they see on social media, it's giving a lot of challenges to these children. Now they want to copy the other culture, we want to do things the other way, but that's not what we are known for, you know. And what you see on social media is not helping at all. They are role models, the people these children are exposed to. You see them picking some role models that are like, this person you are, that is your role model. I mean, I mean, the lifestyle of this person is not something that is so fantastic. But the social media will make some of these things so pronounced as if, oh, this is the way it's supposed to be, which is not. So the challenges we are having, number one, is the influence, the impact of social media on these children, especially the, the teenagers. The influence of their peer, peer pressure, it's also there. If we don't have all that, oh, 
a normal Nigerian child would thrive so well because you know our culture we have this uh, culture of respect and things like that you know and the uh, 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 um, the culture of helping each other you know if not for the influence of social media a normal Nigerian child would thrive so well so well in this present uh, world that we are in. So the major challenge that I want to say is the fact that we are having social media um, uh, impact on them. And now a lot of abuse flowing in the air. And the society tendencies that we are having presently, that a lot of children are like, but what we do here, we do a lot of mentorship in our school. You know, we have foster parents amongst the teachers who are so they call their mentors, who, who talk to the, the children one on one, we talk to them group in group, we try as much as possible to build them and build their self-esteem so that this issue of uh, suicidal tendencies will not be an issue with them, you know. And then talking of abuse, we also help them, we question them, we help them to talk to talk out the problems they are having. So some of them are able to say some things out, are able to come in and help them. So what uh, a Nigerian child will need presently is an enabling environment to talk, to express his or her mind, either at home or in the school. Because we're also having challenges with parents who are not there, who are not there for their children. You know, we have different kind of parents. The business parents that don't come home, that uh, parents that go to work and stay there to, to, to the next day. So I want to say that every school should have this, so that the children will not keep some things inside them that will make them to do some funny things at the end of the day. So the major challenges are what we're seeing around us. But by the special grace of God, we can overcome. We can do it if we join our hands together. How will you describe um, the secondary arm of the school uh, it's, in the beginning it was about the nursery primary and it was the most excellent school around but years ago the secondary arm started and it's like it was the best thing that happened because a lot of parents according to what we read your profile said that they wanted a continuity of your educational culture that there's a custom and tradition and they don't want their children to be cut off maybe in terms of transiting from your primary or your final at uh, the primary to another secondary school. So how did you start the secondary and what pushed the idea of starting a secondary arm and how has it fared well on the on the poop hill? The secondary actually I would say is a dream of my parents. Because like I say I said initially I came in here just about fifteen years ago. So I think there was a need because they, uh, the children at the primary, from Nausea to primary, uh, they were going out to other schools. So there was this need that ah, this culture, the Christian ethics, the principles that we, we embedded in the life of these children should not just go like that. So that they were, they were being pressed, let me use that word, to go ahead and have the secondary school. And then I think uh, over the years, They've never regretted it because it has helped to create continuity, like you said. So we have children coming in from the cradle, and at the end of the day, in SS3, they graduate into the universities. And those children, the culture that we, we, uh, that we try to instill in them, has stayed with them and help them to thrive in the world out there. Looking at the educational sector, how have you been able to escape the challenge of fraud. You, you see schools now in Nigeria whereby we now dis, uh, we, we, we design them as special centers whereby children can go, even the low IQ children, parents will sponsor their children, spend money, and say, okay, please let my children just pass and move on to the next level. How have Elias International School brand escaped the peer pressure of corruption, especially in the educational sector, why is your own school, your own institution very different, and why are you not kowtowing to that court? It's all about principle and determination. It's not really easy because um, the educational system is totally corrupt from the, uh, from the top even to the least. So, but you have to put your feet on the ground and say, this is what you want. This is your brand. 
and then you don't you don't wave her you stay by that determined by that uh, principle you want to put down now i want to say that um we have parents who have come to this school and say oh please i want my child to be taught my practice this why are you not doing it and so on and so forth but we stay by that principle of zero tolerance for my practice and again we don't just say it we work it you know you people say you walk the talk so you don't just talk and say it's our parents for my practice and then you're sleeping our teachers work hard you know to ensure that these children are taught well taught so they have the confidence to sit down so automatically when you when the, uh, when they are well taught there's no reason for the child to say oh i want to go and cheat or whatever because the confidence is there so we walk the talk we try as much as possible to ensure that the children are well trained yes well trained so already many of them are not thinking of cheating i'll say many of them you know some of them will still like oh maybe there's a way out but when the exam comes and we are like we stand on our toes and we don't allow it everybody cooperates and then we move on so it's all about principle and standing by what you want to stand for standing by your principle so it's working we don't allow it we don't cheat we don't pay examiners don't do that and our teachers don't enter the examination hall to pass papers and things like that we don't have time for that so and god has been helping us we've been producing wonderful results distinctions uh, two years ago i came for the international school day to cover i was in lagos and uh, it's to my delights and let me say to my surprise that most of the students that came out to present one event or the other especially in the dramatic arts department of your school most of them were Muslim students, and there was a particular event that came, and the Muslim student sang a Christian song to the admiration of many parents. Why? Because your school is a basic Christian-oriented school. How are you able to win the confidence of the Muslim parents for them to put their children here and put them in your care, believing you to build them into standard citizens of the world? We don't discriminate. It's a Christian school. But we love every child, both the Muslim and the Christian. We don't discriminate. We love them. We appreciate them. But we teach them the right thing, the morals that the children need, the integrity. If you look at our core value, I mean, cut across the board, whether you're a Christian or a Muslim, discipline, good morals, determination, diligence, creativity, excellence, integrity are part of what should be in the life of everyone so uh, these are the things we instill in them and then because we don't discriminate if you're doing it well you're doing it right i mean uh, you, 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 we train you the same way we train the christian every one of us we are together that's just the thing so we don't say oh you are a muslim so you can't participate in this no 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 no. we sing together we do everything together so i think it's the spirit of love actually permeates the air and that helps us to build both christian muslim whoever you are we don't discriminate though it's a christian school but we are together so every one of us we don't i mean the children love us we love them and they love each other at 30 you are trying to start a library a, a science science-based library and all that can you talk about this and how do you think nigeria can come into this because it's a vision that is part of your uh, your, 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 your your profile uh, your intention for the 30 celebration what is it all about and is this, uh, how do the society, the governments, and the people, especially parents, guardians, and alumni, puts a hand of trust. The reading culture is facing out gradually all over the world because of the influence of um, all these gadgets, the phones, the iPads, and things like that. And so we believe that um, for us to have a total child, we need to have a good library now the library even the library thing is already facing out uh, in nigeria we had a lot of libraries abiola library i remember things like that but now you hardly see libraries around so alas we are working on this now uh, a, a library an ehi library but we also be having hard copies not just 
E alone. And then we're going to have uh, systems in the library that the children can use to connect to the world out there. And then a lot of books from Amazon, different everywhere around the world, the children will have access to those books. Not only science-based books, every, every book that, let me say, makes sense, let me use the word, makes sense in the world, we won't, we won't have them in our system. Okay, and what makes sense. Make sense. Okay, makes sense. Yes, I'm just using that in quotes. Okay. Any book that makes sense. Okay. Hey. What I mean is the book that we had value to the children. So we are going to have all that on our systems. And then we are going to give them opportunity to 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 go on internet to using the systems. That's the laptops. So we're thinking of having about uh, 200 uh, computer systems that will be loaded with all these e-books and then add copy to, we're going to have that. So we're looking at a very big all. And then we want to open this library on Saturdays to the world out there, the students around. We have a lot of public schools around the Elias community. So uh, we want to give back to the community. So we're looking at having opportunity, giving opportunity to students out there to come in on Saturdays and make use of the systems, the computer systems to read and also borrow the art copy books. So it's a very big dream. And uh, we have the building, but we're working on the systems and the strategy to, uh, to use for this e-library. You've spoken about the challenges of the social media and why it is having a strong influence on the teenagers who are the uh, largest number of students that you handle. Are you afraid that this Facebook is taking away concentration of young people from the traditional book? There's this perception that the Facebook my stolen attention or commitment of young readers from the traditional book. You look at the tradition, you look at the library now, you see that most of the books are gathering dust. Everybody is having a bend down strategy, either on their Twitter account or their Facebook, either on an iPad or with an iPhone. So how do we get out of this and how do we bring back the culture of traditional book reading? It's going to be a tough order because um, whether we like it or not, uh, the Facebook, Twitter, and so on, they've come to stay. So, uh, well, it's, it's a challenge, but we cannot do without it. And what I can say is that we should try as much as possible to educate our children and then help them how that you cannot just sit down and keep facing the Facebook. You have to face your book, real life, not just facing the Facebook. All we can do is to encourage them, one, to motivate them, because it's all over. And then I will tell parents out there that as much as possible, you must have a, 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 a particular time range, or let me use the word, a, a particular time that your child or year that your child will be introduced to the Facebook. For me, uh, I told my children, there's time for everything. So for now, uh, when you're in this particular age, then you can go on Facebook. For now, no, you see, and it's working. So if, if every parent out there will not just leave every, uh, their, their children, eh, whether you're seven years old, just be on the Facebook, do anything. I want to say that what the Facebook is, uh, causing in the life of these children is not a small one. I'll tell you one now. One, uh, a kid, I think uh, about uh, 14 years, and this is really, it's not, I'm not telling a story, it's real, was dating somebody else on the Facebook. You understand? Just chatting and so on. Just, just pick somebody you don't know. And then before you know it, a lot of conversation, things like that, taking the time. This child's grade started dropping. A teacher noticed it and said, ah, your grades are dropping, this and that, oh, nothing, nothing. Eventually, she opened up and said, well, 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 um, although sometimes I spend my time on Facebook doing what? 
oh i can't do without it now because my best friend the person i'm going to marry in future is on that this and stuff and so on this is a child of 14. if for adventure the parents have tried as much as possible to block that child's way or monitor that child at least that won't happen and you know the unfortunate thing this child is let me say worse because he's no more dating now he was dating a somebody that's far older a child of 14 dating somebody of about let's say 26 years you know i mean but she didn't know initially but now that she felt that i'm in love got to know the age i don't i don't mind you can see that but that's the that's the negative impact of this Facebook. So I want to tell parents out there and even teachers as much as possible, help these children, help them. Let them have a time range. Or let me use a particular year when they will be introduced into this Facebook and all other chats and so on to go and so many things like that. So that at the end of the day, they'll be able to manage it when they are mature enough to handle such a social media uh, people are now saying that a lot of you know parents are pushing their children oh they have to graduate at the age of 18 hey my child has to get to school quick and some enthusiasts uh, educational enthusiasts are saying that there must be a stage or a kind of uh what kind of a graded age i mean there must be a stopover that at certain age you must finish the secondary school some are saying why are we not using six three three four now, why should parents rush it? At what age do you think a child should go to the university? Because a lot of people say, we want a child to graduate at the age of 18 and so that they be called the youngest graduates in the world. But as an educationist, do you think this is good for the brain of the child? And what do you think are the consequences of having a child to, or fast track the education of a child against the norms? You said 18. Yes. That's not even it. Because it's not graduate at the age of 18. Some even want them to graduate at the age of 17, if possible. That's what I want to say. Because when you ask a child of 8 years to go to the secondary school, and then uh, you had 6 to 8, what's that? You had 6 to 8? Yes. What's that age? That's 12. 6 to 8. 14. 14. And the child goes to the university for another 4 years. Okay. I think that's 18 too. Yes. Okay. But the truth of the matter, if possible, they want the child to graduate at 17. And then it's so unfortunate because many of these children are not prepared for what they will face in the world out there or what they will face in the university. You see, I, 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 I'm not a, I, I, I don't support releasing children at the age of eight and nine to the secondary school. No matter how intelligent that child is, let me use my children for example. They did the common entrance thing for in, in so many schools at the age of eight, they passed. At the age of nine, they did it and they made it. But I didn't allow them to go until they finished primary six. Their mates have gone. Well, I don't care because I believe that. What are you, what you are going to be, you are going to be, you know. So I allowed them to finish primary six well and then move into the secondary school and we are not in a hurry i tell them i'm not in a hurry you're going to get to where you want to get to now so what we see there is that a lot of parents don't allow maturity to take place in the life of the children. so they just throw them there and you know the unfortunate thing some of our parents will throw them into the boarding house and there are a lot of disasters happening over there. And then they go to the university at the age of 14 too. And then the big guys will catch them, you know. And then you see them in court, one court or the other. I want to say that 90% by statistics, 90% of the children that go to the university at such tender age, they join courts and they join the wrong set of people, either as a male or female. Yeah, yes. And then they are, they are being used also. They are the ones that they, they use them. The other day we had that a child uh, uh, in, used in the, uh, in the university. Went into people's houses because the child has a very small stature. Eventually died. And the people that took him there left him there. And they promised them a lot of things. And the children are like, oh, yes, yes, yes. And they feel high where they're nothing. Another thing I want to say, even in Nigeria, somehow 
we kind of encourage it. Where we say, oh, uh, if you want to go to, if you want to work, some businesses will say, we want very young, we want young people, oh, if you're 20 years. Now, if you say you want a child of 20, you are telling us that we should graduate them on time. And when they say 20 years, they still say experience. Where would that child get that experience? A child that leaves university, I mean, I don't know. I mean, we are, we are contradicting each other. So, you know, the parents who are running, that now the banks the banks and these businesses are saying they want young people and so five years yes with five years experience and so we are all running so it's a rat race do you understand yes so somehow it's a circle so it's going around. Mm -hmm. So I don't blame the parents. I want the children to quickly finish because they know that all over they are saying finish, finish by 20, come and work, have five years experience. Where would the experience come from? So we need to look inward as a country. That's just the whole thing. And then rectify all this from the from the Ministry of Education, Federal Ministry of Education, state, parents, and then the world out there and the universities. I thank God for some universities now. They are putting their foot on the ground. They say, uh, a university like Unilag now, no child comes in if the child is not up to um, 16. Do you understand? So, University of Lagos selling this idea and some other schools too. Even Covenant University, that's a private school, uh, they're also in it. So I want to say that let's all buy the idea. Let's flaunt it. Let everybody know that the, ch the child should be mature enough to enter into the university before that child goes in. Can we know much about Miss Onua Kemi? Onua Guno, who is she and uh, what does she stand for? You appear to be someone that is very conservative and uh, loaded indeed but who are you in the real sense because we know you as the administrator of this school but who is this woman and what does she stand for and uh, what does what is her philosophy yes you're meeting mrs Oluwa Kemi, Ruth Oluwa Guno. well i'm conservative like you said and um who am i yes, i'm a counselor i love talking I love encouraging people. Uh, I'm excited when it comes to counseling. And I cancel both the children. Uh, I'm into youth work, actually. And I love it. I also cancel um, parents. And I cancel people in uh, uh, husbands and wives. Let me say, I'm a married counselor too. Yeah. So I'm versatile when it comes to. Oh, well. <laughs> Yeah, I, 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 I studied um, counseling for my master's. So, and in uh, counseling, we deal with every area. Deal with uh, the psychological one, marriage counseling, um, youth. I mean, it's, it's a very, uh, yes, it's diverse and it's also a big one. So, uh, counseling, uh, married couple is not a challenge for me. And talking of experience, I'm married and happily married for that matter so and uh, I also want to say that I love reading and when you are a reader you tend to gain more experience so I read a lot I read a lot so yes I read ebooks I spend my nights some nights reading I, I enjoy reading because um, my parents they actually instilled that reading culture we had a library in our in our house then a very big one we even borrow students our colleagues books so we have a encyclopedia we have so many things in our library so it's so naturally we all are readers in our family so reading helps you to it exposes you to so many things so even without experiencing some things you experience it because you've i mean somehow you've come across it yeah so yeah, so that's so you are asking who I am. Yes, who are so you? that's uh, that's part of me, of and uh, I'm a lover of people. Yes, yes I, 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 I like to mix with people. Yeah. I'm not so social, but I like mixing with people, you know. And then I also am a Christian. Because I was going to ask, we are going to go into politics since you like me to a dream. Uh, no, <laughs> politics is out of it completely. When I say mixing with people, uh, making impact in the life of people generally, you know. So, I'm a Christian. 
Yeah. Talking about Christian, what uh, what pieces you offer about today's church? I just asked the proprietor too that the church is supposed to be the bane of profound education for every young people. When the parents start from home, the school should be the middle, then the church should be the last phase. But when you look at today's church, whereby money, money, money is the issue at hand, and the family, whereby the father, the mother are chasing money as well, because the church needs money to develop their structures, and the private school are also asking for so much money. So, but what is your position of the modern day church as a Christian? Do you think they are also playing their role in molding the character of an average young person for a better adulthood? Uh, the, let me use the word today, the church, um, money, money, like you said, prosperity syndrome and things like that. I think it's just um, an end time thing. It's not, uh, it's not surprising because that's what the Lord Jesus Christ said. So all we need to just do is as much as possible, every Christian out there should be cautious of what is happening in the environment. Now to the churches, um, I will say that um, I wish all ministers will be more conscious of heaven. Yes, we want to be rich and then we want prosperity. We all want it, but it shouldn't take righteousness from us. It shouldn't take um, the Christian principles from us. So I want to encourage and I want to say to parents, to ministers, to churches, as much as possible, let's have that heaven consciousness in us. And then if we have it, the issue of prosperity, whatever, and the uh, money, money, will not uh, overtake the core of Christianity, which is righteousness, holiness, and the need to get to heaven. And the last note now, can you give advice? 30 years is not a joke. Driving at 30, can you talk to the old students, alumni of Elias, who are now very much successful in their endeavors, parents, guardian, sponsors, and to be parents, people who are looking at the school and say, one day my child will go to Elias and be successful in life. What do you have to, for them? What is your 30th anniversary message to lovers, fans of Elias National School? Thriving at 30. And the message I have for everyone is thriving means to progress. Thriving means to advance, to keep moving, to keep succeeding. So I want to say to the world out there, both parents and alumni, my wish for you is to continue thriving. Either at 30, 40, just continue to thrive, progress, succeed advance no stagnancy and to achieve that you need god you need that work and then you need to know that it's possible so i want to say lastly be happy be joyful whatever state you might find yourself now god is still in charge when the going gets tough the tough gets going keep moving but never stop and then you will succeed and we will definitely see each other at the top.